Good. We can start. We have a wonderful full house. This is great. So I say welcome to Race of AI. It's uh, the second edition of it. I remember we started the first version of it in the sea base with 20 people. Last time we were 100. Now I would say 150. Yes, this is good. Next time we already know it, it will be a 300. Yes, exponential growth for this topic too. So, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm your host for tonight. My name is Fabian. Uh, I, I invited all of you, most of you. And um, I run a venture capital firm based uh, here in Berlin for the topic of artificial intelligence. I organize together with my wife, Veronika, um, from Pandora Events, a race of AI uh, twice in a year. Um, I also like to blog about the topic and like to speak about it. Briefly introduction, I will talk, I have seven slides for you to prepare you for the topic. Then we will have two talks by uh, Trent and Anish. And afterwards, the speakers will still be around. You can start uh, to continue to discuss what you learned, uh, what you heard, be inspired, just mingle. A little bit networking will be augmented. If you want to tweet, please use uh, Race of AI. And uh, I hope you all have left your mark on the fingerprint tree. Yes, I think you have all at least considered what opportunities for upgrading will be there for you, which you would like to have. And maybe some of the talks will give you the opportunities to think about um, when they will come. Um, also, I would like to announce that for the last two weeks or three weeks, now I am the head, you call it coordinator for the topic of artificial intelligence for the German Startup Association. So whoever has here an AI company and would like to be represented, we call it lobbying, Yes, or anyone who he would like to discuss the whole topic in I on the level of economy, society, in a more formal way, please send me an email with your wishes, with your ideas. I just created this position for myself, yes, to, to, to foster the whole ecosystem, to foster the system for AI. And I want to bring people together. But this, it will be more, let's say, on a policy level, working on special topics, which could be in our way to the path of singularity. And with this, I would like to start. I would like to give you a small status update what AI is today. Yes, where are we standing? Um, the first is, and we have to think that GAFA economy, so Google, Amazon, Apple, and uh, Facebook for this, is we have a lot of progress machine learning. Actually, machine learning is around, and the whole topic of AI is around since we have computers. 50s, 60s, 70s, we have these so-called AI winters in between. So there was always up and downs, and they say, oh, AI is coming now, we have it now, and it's not there. If you read science fiction from the 50s and 60s, it's not there. Yes, we don't have a full aware AI yet too, but we are on a good path there. So machine learning, the tools to train machines, to learn, to teach itself, they have been around for a while, but they got improved. And in combination with processing power, today we're able to achieve it. One example, I spoke with a friend about it. In the 50s, they had neural nets or tried to play with it or in the 60s and 70s, but they had one layer. Today, they have a thousand layers. So you have way more possibilities with computers to achieve the results which you couldn't do it before. The second is um, we have progress with NLP, so natural language processing and visual and audio recognition. So machines are today better to understand what we humans want from them, to understand how we write, uh, if we speak, if we have pictures. Yes, best example is with Google and the cat pictures. So machines are today able to understand us way better, which helps us a lot with the human machine communication. The next is very important is data mining, big data. Co especially corporations and a lot of internet companies started to collect the data in the last decade and now need machine learning to make sense out of this data. So a lot of companies out there are data driven and need AI or AI tools to figure out what can we do with this data and to implement this. So without these data, there was no need for machine learning and no need for AI so far. And then with the internet. The internet hasn't been around 30 years ago. And without the internet, no one would be here today because I invited every one of you virtual. Yes. Um, also, we wouldn't have the means of AI today. So where did this lead to? Well, we had more startups starting AI companies, meant more money went in, more money went, more people thought AI is cool and started next AI company. And we saw a lot of progress in, in M&A. So whoever hasn't started an AI company yet, 
you should. It's very good timing now. And from the larger corporations who didn't buy an, um, uh, an AI team yet, they should. Because the big ones over there, they buy a lot of in the AI space and very, a lot of good teams are gone. So, what does it mean? Well, I would sum it up that AI is very good at specific tasks today. Yes, this is status quo today. AI is awesome at playing games, better than we are. We all saw it, how they beat Go, and if you saw the game live or later on YouTube, it's pretty amazing to see the commentary. Chess was done, our card games was done. AI is able to fly drones way better than we are. Uh, drive cars, yes, I mean, we have elements of this in Tesla and uh, Google and Daimler and so forth, trucks, boats, planes, but also organized meetings, yes. Um, book your plane tickets, um, shop online. So f whenever you had a personal assistant in the past, today you could use software tools for this. We call them AI. You could use chatbots and so forth. Um, this is the one level. And the other one, AI is able to write songs, draw pictures, um, trade stocks. Yeah? Most of the stocks traded out there, most of the volume and stock trading is done by machines, not by humans anymore. Yes, we have robot advisor and so far who are tr starting using AI to manage your wealth or the wealth of, let's say, people who have more money than we have. Detect fraud, yes, especially in the financial industry, AI has been there for a very long time. Write emails. So whenever you get an email today, most likely it was written by AI. There are companies who just press a button and they say, well, please write an email to this person and the software is taking all the data from the net there, is creating super personalized email about the weather and where you're living and the friends you have and is writing a sales email which is over and over improved over the time, which is way better than a human could write it. And the same as if someone is answering an email, especially in customer support by now or the next two years, it will be done by software, by AI. There is no human need anymore because at the end it's a human machine, machine communication. Whenever there's a machine in the pathway, very likely AI is behind this. We also see a lot of progress in instant medical diagnosis. So AI is pretty good figuring out if you're sick and what you have and way faster than a lot of doctors. I'm very interested. We have a doctor later speaking here, what he thinks about this. But also what I saw as an investor in the last time is AI starting to optimize complex processes. If you speak about production cycles, supply chain, manufacturing processes, AI is today able to understand what either you have for 20, 30 years of work experience, and they can solve this in a couple of hours, or AI is all able to solve problems in production cycles, which you couldn't solve before because too much data, too complex, yes, too many factors coming in. So what I say is today we have a narrow artificial intelligence already. It is there. Yes, we speak about AI and we have narrow AI. That means AI is better than we humans are in a very specific tasks once they are trained. Important is to say trained. It used to be very expensive and time enduring to train a machine, to train a machine to be better than you. But today with the internet, with all the data and with all the progress in machine learning tools, it got very cheap and very easy and very fast to train your machines. So today it doesn't take years anymore to develop a software which is better than a human in a certain task. It can be only a couple of weeks, months or days. Additional these machines doing the jobs 24-7, yes, uh, never get sick, don't want to go on a strike, and yes, well, don't have lobbying yet. Um, this is my favorite chart. Wait, but why? If most of you maybe know the blog, if you don't know the blog, you really have to check it out. Um, the question for you is, do you want to compete? Do you want to compete in one of these tasks with a machine? I say, we are here. They say, we're here, there will be an AGI, artificial general intelligence, somewhere there, super intelligence after both. I say for some fields, for some areas, the machine is already better than we humans are. And we want this. Yes? We create them. Um, so I asked every one of you, and uh, I, then I figured out it was, uh, you had to answer it. Yes, it wasn't a free one. What makes us humans unique? Maybe you remember uh, your own answer you gave us. Uh, I got over 250 answers and I tried to sum it up a little bit. What makes us humans special? What makes us unique in contrast to machines? Because machines are better in jobs. They are better in a lot of stuff we do because we want them to do. So what makes us human? The, my first answer I saw was this. 42. <laughs> yes. Okay. Answers a lot. Yes. And these who, who smiled know. Um, nothing. That was a very common answer. 
Why? Why not? I like this one. I, he said, I'm not sure if we truly are. So if you're on the Matrix and if you have the books uh, of Dick and you don't know if you are aware or not aware and if this is a real world, I can't solve this today either. Yes, but then you have maybe a little more philosophical problems than just thinking if we're unique or not. Um, the next cluster wor was this, creativity, taste, critical thinking, visionary thinking, flexibility, transfer knowledge, image, uh, on long-term planning. That is a lot of human stuff there, but I put them in the corner here. Why? Because machines already solved this, but not in a human-like way. We saw that machines can dream. They just don't dream like we dream. We have machines who are very creative, who write songs, who draw pictures. We have machines who have a taste, who can tell you which is the new trend. They can write, just check out Netflix. Yes, most of the stuff you're watching Netflix, an AI has figured out that you have to watch it before, you know it, and they even started producing it. They tell you, well, this actor with this topic, with this theme, will be very popular with this target group. So they already figure this out. And so a lot of this stuff is done by AI too. So what's left? Well, what's left is this. Conscience, compassion, emotions, greed, love, hate, ethics and moral, humor, soul and spirit. By the way, soul and spirit, I didn't solve it. It was only there once. So nothing about belief and religion was there. So very special group here. Curiosity, insecurity, luck, and our DNA. And I spoke with a couple of friends about this, and we all couldn't solve this yet for software. I didn't see any startups yet who solve this. So if you're working on this, yes, do it. The other question is for yourself, what does this mean about us? There is no job description here. I didn't find anything. No one said, well, we work, we live, we're very good in this and this, this job, so work is not part of being unique. But feeling, I think, is being unique, yes? Having emotions is unique. And also interesting is this, this is all wired in your DNA. This is all part of your biochemistry. This is nothing we program or we invented or we teach. This is something you're born with and you're living with and you develop them less, or, you know, especially the emotion reading is very tricky. Yeah, if you have a woman, you, you have to learn it. Um, this is still something we haven't solved and we don't have a formula for this. Well, and the last answers I liked is asking this question. This taught me that I'm still human. I'm not a machine. I ask you this question means I'm not, I'm, I'm unique still. That's wonderful. So, my second favorite chart, yes, is everything blue you see is kind of a human wealth index, yes? The, the, the higher it goes, the better we humans are there. So, not hard, yes, two and a half million years we were gatherers and hunters, you know, we went out hunting there and then it, it, it got a little bit better and then we have here the t point when it started to accelerate it, yes, when everything took off. And the interesting thing is, this is industrial revolution. We started using machines on a large scale. And we used them to work less. Yes, we wanted to have more productivity, more output. Um, we used them to accelerate us as a humankind. But this led to us being better off, a lot of better off. In the last 150 years, we increased our lifespan by 150%. So every one of you above 30, be happy, because 200 years ago, you would be dead with a high likelihood. Also, our wealth increased by 600% global, especially here in Germany. I think it's over 1,000% and so forth. We don't feel it anymore. Our generation doesn't. Our grandparents felt it a lot. They, they doubled their, their, their wealth every 10 years. Yes, it got a little bit slower. But still, we, we have more money. We have more access to technology, knowledge. We can buy more things because everything got cheaper. Yes, so we all have, honestly, a very, very good life. And then we work less. Yes, it used to be 75 hours in average in France in the 19th century. Today in France it's 35, in Germany it's about 35 to 40. So we work less, so we have more money, we're more healthier, and we're spending less time to work. So I say, this all comes because we use technologies, because we embraced them, we accepted it. So my message for today is, we don't have to fear AI, we take AI to live longer, to be more intelligent, to be more happy, to have more free time. Uh, these were my last words um, as an introduction. Now.